All right, 200 fused frames. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the final milestone of Satisfactory Update 8. Milestone reached. I wonder if he'll come back now. Because we're done with him. <laughs> he probably will. That's it. Look at that. No more milestones. We've completed everyone. That's the first time I've ever done that in this game. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to get started with the first part of setting up two nuclear power plants, um, because uh, we don't really need the power and probably won't need it before this series is over and we start with 1.0, but I wanted to, to do it, you know, just to see what it's like and experience and all that. Um, also, for that reason, we may not... Um, we, we may set it up to where we're just storing the waste. That is my plan at the moment, but depending upon how our time goes with the rest of this series, uh, I might change that and convert the waste into plutonium rods so we can either use them or sink them. Uh, but, you know, it, and I would definitely do it that way if this, you know, if this save was going to keep continue on. But because it's not, um, we'll, we'll just, you know, play that one by ear. But in case you guys didn't know, with nuclear waste, or more specifically uranium waste or plutonium waste, um, you can't sink that. So you have to either store it or you have to turn it into a different, a, a solid product that is sinkable to get rid of it. Um, so the easy way to handle it, though it can cause long-term problems, as you can imagine, is to, is to just simply store the waste in a big, you know, a waste disposal facility, which means stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of storage containers way off at the end of the map. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's uh, yeah, that's the deal. So this is where we're going to build things, and as you can see, I've 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 color coded um, the tiles here to just help me place it. the The equipment that you need to set up a nuclear nuclear power isn't super complicated i mean it's it's fairly involved but it's not quite as bad as i thought it was going to be but it does get more complex if you also then set up the machines that you need to deal with the waste which again at this point i'm not planning on doing that but that could change now before we get started in earnest with that though um there i have made several changes to the world and we're going to go into fly mode and just uh, show you those real quick before we like i said before we actually get started here um, all right, so let's go back over to uh, our factory here, and I have set up some more temporary lines to make it some items that we're going to need. Um, so these two manufacturers have been making uh, the radiation filters and the gas filters, and they are finished making those. I've got two full bins-ish of both of those types of filters. Um, the reason why I, I made... All of the gas filters that I did is because the default recipe makes 50 gas filters well let me put it this way you only need half of the filters of the default recipe to make the iodine filters so I figured well let's let's just make a batch of both and then what I'm gonna do and have already started doing with some of the filters is uh, I don't know if I even actually showed this to you guys but this bottom row of storage that has the yellow text um, this is not automated storage, so this is just manual storage uh, with some high-end stuff that I don't have a permanent production line for that I, you know, where I store that. So high-speed connectors, supercomputers, oscillators, etc. So I have a couple of bins over here that I'm going to move all of the filters over here. Uh, we need these in particular as we start to work with, you know, the nuclear stuff to protect against the radiation. Now, we're also going to need a bunch of magnetic control rods for some research and, and for, oh my god, okay, that that's all we need. <laughs> okay, let's shut this off. Um, so we're going to need these for, uh, for Milestone, actually. And you know what, we could even maybe, we might be ready to actually do that. I, I know that that Milestone requires uh, 200 of these. 
So let's grab those. We might as well do that too if we can because this is our very last milestone. Oh, and I took a couple of alternate recipes. And we should have another one here ready to go too. Ah, uh, these... I, I, I just... I am not finding good recipes anymore. Everything that pops up just sucks, so... I, I, I'm going to just start taking stuff at random because, you know, that'll increase the chance of anything good that still may be left will pop up. So of these three, the only one that I would even, you know, vaguely consider is this one. Maybe not even no, vaguely, remotely. Vaguely is not the right word uh, for that. So let's just take that and um, let's not actually start another hard drive quite yet. And the reason for that is I just want to, this is the last thing we have to research, and it's going to require 10 encased uranium cells. I think that's what those are called, right? Uh, yes. And so what we'll do is once we get this uh, production line started, we'll, we'll pull 10 of those off the line in order to, to then research this nuclear development. And, man, I, I'd really like to actually have these before we go set up our uranium miner because the spot the the nearest uranium deposit in is extremely dangerous as you guys will see um because i did go over there you know and hook something up real quick for testing purposes uh okay so anyway we're not going to be able to get those immediately so we might as well get another drive going here split that out of there Okay, now let's go over here, and this is our final milestone of the of the game. Um, so, oh, that needs 400. Okay, so let's select this milestone, and we're going to need 400 cooling systems, 200 mod uh, fuse frames, and 100 turbo motors. So it said 100, 100 turbo motors, so let's grab 100 of those. Um, I think it said 400 uh, cooling systems. Where do I have this? Here. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to even have enough room for that. So let's go put in what we have so far. Okay, so we need 200 more cooling, 200 more rods, and 200 fused. Okay, there's the cooling and the rods, and we just need the fused. All right, 200 fused frames. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final milestone of Satisfactory Update 8. Milestone reached. The particle accelerator enables previously impossible processes such as recycling nuclear waste and converting it into plutonium as well as the generation of exotic matter. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. I wonder if he'll come back now. Because we're done with him. <laughs> he probably will. That's it. Look at that. No more milestones. We've completed everyone. That's the first time I've ever done that in this game. Quite the achievement. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, this opens up the ability for us to then make plutonium fuel rods, which is the only way we can get rid of the nuclear waste or the, or the uranium waste. Now, I, I did some reading up on this. You can take these and then use them also as fuel in a nuclear power plant but there's no way to dispose of its waste however um you have a much less waste with the plutonium than you do with uranium but you still would have to ultimately store it somewhere if you opted to use uh you know use these as extra power so it just depends upon you want extra power and then have to deal with permanent waste storage or do you just want to throw it all in a sink and not have to ever worry about it you can also use these as fuel 
um, in vehicles, but it does make the vehicles radioactive until the fuel starts being consumed or something to that effect. So it's, I, I don't know how, how, how practical that is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I suppose it might not be a bad idea if you, if you had, you know, a bunch of vehicles, like, you know, a big truck line that you're never really going to be around and have to worry about it. Um, and then you could actually, you know, take these and put them into the fuel output. So, uh, and they, they last a really long time too, like way longer than even turbo fuel. All right. So anyway, um, that's, uh, that's that. So I, I don't think we're going to have time to really get into any of this stuff before, you know, we're done, but we'll see, you know, we'll just keep going and until we can't go anymore. Let's go ahead now and um, I, I think we have plenty of electromagnetic fuel rods, so I'm going to stop that so we can, you know, so we don't exhaust our entire supply. Well, it looks like we already exhausted our copper sheets, but those won't take too long um, to, to come back online. Uh, but I'll clean all this stuff up later. I don't want to spend any more time on that right now. Okay, so a couple more things I want to show you before we actually get started. So what I did over here, as you can see, is I created an, a new train station. Actually, I created two new train, uh, train stations. All of the inputs that we need to make this work include sulfur and coal, um, which I ran conveyor lines off of the main lines going down the road over there and also had to update the miner feeding the coal, uh, which is way up there in order to, you know, get enough um, coal. So we got that coming in, but then we also have limestone, iron, copper, and cateterium ingots that we also need to make this work in addition to the uranium, which ultimately we will run on this lower third hanger here along the, the railway there. So rather than try and tap into everything I got going on over there, which we could have done, um, I figured, you know what, why don't we instead take advantage of the resources we have up at our original factory and we'll just bump up their miners you know so we have the proper flow rate and then just um ship that stuff down here via train since we already have a railway going up there anyways right and so that's what i did so we've got ourselves a, a train station here with four um uh, freight platforms. So this one does the cateterium ingots, this one does the copper, this one does the iron, and this one does the limestone. And I have a sink set up specifically for the cateterium because the front car on here is then also used to continue grabbing the assembly director systems over there, which by the way, if you look in the upper right hand corner, uh, we are 340 away from from finishing that. And once that's done, then I'll probably just, I'll either throw those things into a sink um, or, yeah, I don't know. I'll do something with it later. But anyway, there's our train. And right now I've got it disabled from picking up any more of these resources until we're ready for it to. But it's all set to do that. I just have to set up the, the timetable for it. Um, yeah, so that's where, where all these resources come. And then I could have run conveyor belts too, but I figured, what the hell? You know, we got the train already going back and forth we might as well take advantage of it and that's uh, so it works pretty good from the testing now let's actually go over to the original base and i'll just kind of show you a couple of changes i made over there to support all of this and then we'll get started uh, with the build um this is um these are the lines of course that i brought over i still have plenty of sulfur coming in i didn't have to change the flow rate of that but i did have to change the flow rate of the miner that's connected to that copper. Uh, it was a Mark I, I think, and I upgraded it to a Mark II. <clears throat> or maybe a Mark III, I don't remember. Okay, so over here, we have our original train station for the space elevator. Uh, but then I set up another train station. And we named this um, Rocky Desert Depot. And these are the inputs for those four resources. Uh, oh, that's just that invisible bug thing. The, the limestone's actually on there. It's just invisible. Uh, so these are all just jam-packed and waiting, you know, for us to, to actually start. Which, of course, is why I have the train disabled from picking any of that up at the moment. And then I just kind of redid the, the track to, you know, circle around that way. 
Over there, I upgraded uh, one of the iron miners and one of the co copper miners in order to support, you know, the extra flow. So that's what's going on right here. And over here. So this one was also upgraded to a Mark II. Uh, if you guys, re if you've been watching the series from the very beginning, you'll remember this, you know, this is our starter factory here, this whole area. I also had to upgrade the Caterium Miner, which is way over that way, to a Mark II, and upgrade the line bringing in the ore. And then I just plop, uh, oops, I guess I forgot to cover that back up. I just plopped down a smelter to turn it into ingots and, and send the ingots instead of the ore itself. Uh, one of the things I've thought about doing, you know, for our next playthrough is is doing this with all of the ores. So pretty much all of our Caterium that we've used in this playthrough, I've I've converted it to ingots at, at or near the site, um, except for the, our starter factory here. But I haven't done that with any of the other ores, so I'm trying to decide, is it worth it to do the smelting at the site and ship the ingots in or to ship the raw ore in? You know, there's pros and cons, of course, to doing it both ways. All right, so that gets us caught up on all of the changes. Let's go on back to our build site and start putting together two nuclear power plants. All right, guys. First thing we're going to do is grab some power lines so we can hover. I turned the cheaty cheat fly off and back off. Oh, I was going to actually also show you um, what's going on out here, but... All where where you if you look way out there and you see the the foundations that you know start to to move to the north that that's the border of the map. If I go any further than that, I start taking damage. Um, and it actually starts to kind of curve around in an arc this way, so I can't really go any further left than that. So we'll just have a big platform that goes you know points to the north, where we'll put all the storage for the nuclear waste. Let's start with the two power plants themselves. And then again, I've got stuff marked. Uh, there's no, not going to be any underflooring in this because it's right down on the, you know, the bottom foundation here, uh, which does make things easier. Not as neat looking, but easier. And we're going to put the first power plant right there, but we're going to bring it this way one notch. And then we'll put the second power plant over here and do the same thing. And we're doing two because um, the default recipe for the uranium rods um, can support two nuclear factories. So that's why we're doing two. I was only going to do one until I discovered that. And then I said, well, what the hell? Let's go ahead and do two. And then that's going to... By the way, these guys are going to give us 5,000 extra uh, megawatts of power together, too. So huge boost. We don't... Again, I don't think we'll, we even need that at all, but we're just doing this to experience, you know, working with nuclear power. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and bring a line back here. And maybe one over here. Go into our blueprints, and uh, I have these color-coded based upon, you know, the color on the concrete here. So we want to grab the uranium fuel rod Uranum, I didn't spell that correctly. Um, and that's going to go uh, right in the center. And I have to remember. I think that's, yeah, I think that's where I want that. We'll find out in a second. And I also forgot to remove this from the blueprint as well. All right, so I've already found two mistakes. Let's go ahead and just fix that, uh, whoops, uh, in the blueprint now. Because I'm, I may end up actually using these again in um, our 1.0 playthrough. I'm assuming we'll be able to carry all of our blueprints over. Can't imagine why we wouldn't be able to. Of course, that is an assumption. I, I don't know that for sure. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is 
uranium. And that means we're going to have to re-select the uh, thing here. And we'll have to delete that one. Okay, save that. And I want to remove this because it uh, we don't actually need it there. And it's not positioned correctly anyway. Okay, so save this. Now, let's also go into here and into here. And we want to remove this one because it's misspelled and has the wrong configuration anyway. Beautiful. Okay, that fixes that. All right, next we're going to set up um, our uh, encased uranium cells. And that's, yeah, that's facing the right direction. Need to get up a little higher here. And we want this set up so that... Yeah, okay, this is how I'm going to be able to tell that I got this right. So this needs to line up with this. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that that's correct overall, but we're going to go with that for the moment. There's kind of um, other indicators as we put these things down that'll help me real, you know, know if I got them positioned correctly. Okay, let's move that over to there. Now we're going to do the back piece uh, to this next, so that's going to be the sulfuric acid refinery and this is how uh, the reason I left that water extractor there is because I'm actually using it as a guide to line these up um, so let's put it there and there And I'm just using yellow for sulfuric acid. So this will be the input for the uranium uh, once that comes in. So we should be able to just grab a pipe and plop that right in there. We'll have to get power to that. So the way this is set up is this is making um, sulfuric acid at 24 per minute. Strangely enough, the encased uranium cells require sulfuric acid as an input, but then they output it again. Why didn't they just factor this into this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's a legit reason for that or what, but anyway, that's just the way it works. So. Uh, because this needs a total of 32 sul uh, sulfuric acid in total, I'm basically just recycling the 8 sulfuric acid, just looping it right back around uh, and putting it back in along with the 24 coming from here. And I also have a valve on here to prevent any backflow. I, I probably don't need to do that, but I did it anyways for the hell of it. Okay, so, so far so good on everything. Um... Let's go ahead and uh, connect our sulfur line here. And that lines up correctly. So I believe I've positioned all of these machines the way they're supposed to be. Maybe. We'll see. Um, all right. Let's get the next part here. So now we want to go and get the encased industrial beams assembler. 
And that goes here. And what we want to do is make sure that this lines up with that one across there. Because that's sending concrete over there to make the cells. Um, and then also, this needs to line up, whoops, with this input on the manufacturer. That looks correct. So that'll go in there, and this is providing 1.2 encased industrial beams for the uranium fuel rods. Let's grab this and hook it up. This machine is providing a total of 18 concrete and it's sending 12 of those concrete over here to make the encased uranium cells and the remaining six it's sending over here to make the encased industrial beams. All right, good. I think we're on track here so far with our positioning and of everything. Let's do the back half of this next. So that's going to be the steel ingot foundry. And I need some more uh, power here. Let's actually do this. Get that kind of more out of the way there. All right, steel ingot foundry. That we want to line up right there. So if I did this correctly, everything should line up the way it's supposed to. So we want to take this and run it down to that coal input. And it's straight, so that looks good. Um, this we run to the iron input However, we're gonna actually When we run those two lines, we're gonna change this, but I'm gonna leave it that way for the moment We can also uh, run our concrete now too So let's get this over to here move it back to Put a lift on that point the lift that way and then run the line here this of course is power pole is temporary so I'm not worried about that right at the moment okay that looks good I think we're ready for the third section here the blue section all right so now we want this electromagnetic control rod assembly and let's get it close to where it needs to go. I think, I think I bring this back one from the edge, if I recall from my testing. We'll be able to tell that because if that goes in there nice and straight, we're good. And it does. Okay. So this is providing two electromagnetic control rods. It's under clock 50% for the third input for this. This uh, default recipe, no, cl no clocking, uh, will create 0.4 uranium fuel rods per minute. Each one of these power plants takes 0.2 per minute. Okay. So far, so good. Now what we want to do is uh, I don't want to put anything in here because uh, power lines in there yet because that's what we're going to do next. Let's grab the last piece which is this one here and we want to put that right there so that that belt lines up with that. This should be uh Okay, no, we got to come over one so that these holes here are lined up. 
should be correct. We'll see. Let's rerun this line so it connects in. These should go right into there. Those into there. Excellent. Okay. And then let's remove uh, remove that stuff for the moment. And we'll hook this up into here. Doesn't quite reach. This one will go here. Auto save. Okay, so this should be running Caterium ingots into here to make quick wire. Yes, it is. So just double check and make sure I got that correct. And this is running copper into here to make copper ingots. Yes. Okay, so let's redo our iron now. We're going to basically do the same thing that we did with the concrete. We'll go back to put a lift on there, lift on here, and hook them up. Okay. Uh, oh, no, I got that cricket. Just realized that. Here, let's take and put you over one. You coming? Yeah. There we go. That looks good. Next, we're going to hook up the front end here, and we also need to get uh, some water. Uh, four water extractors connected, but we'll do that in a minute. Uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to switch to my pipe toolbar and have this on horizontal to vertical. And I'm just going to run this pipe here as far as it'll go and put that there. Then we'll delete that. And we want to grab these pipe supports. Stack those up twice. And hook that straight into there. So we can put a junction here and line it up. All right, now we'll get rid of, we'll have to reset the pipe again. Let's pop a pipe into there, and then we're going to run this down to about here. And just leave that there for the moment. That takes care of the piping. Um, the, oh, you know what, too? Now I think about it. These take 240 water. So this section here has to be Mark II. And you know what? I might just make a make an all mark too. There's no harm in doing that. It uses extra resources, but who cares? We got plenty. Yeah, we'll just make that all mark too. Okay. Now let's hook up next our uh, our belts. So this is going to be our waist. And so we want to bring this out to there and bring it straight down this way. And we need to put a merger here. That hooks that up. All righty. Now we're going to hook up our input, our uranium uh, fuel rod input. So we're going to put a splitter here, but we're going to move it over one notch.
And then this should... Oh, we gotta put a lift here. If I did this right, that should go in nice and straight. Looks good. This one, though, we have to drop down because of the water pipes. Oh, that cable's in the way. Okay, go back two. And into there. All right, that takes care of our fuel rod inputs. All right, let's go over here and do our water pipes now. Uh, I'm sorry, well, water pipes and extractors. We're going to grab a junction, and we're going to put that junction one over from there. Uh, and that should allow us to fit the first extractor in here. Uh, no, I'm too far over. Okay. Maybe it was off center from there. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to put this approximately in the center of this water pathway. I'm going to say maybe right about there. Then we need four of these in total. So we'll just use control to line them all up. Very good. Okay. Now let's do pipe junctions. One there. And one there. And one here. Okay. We don't need that junction and we don't need... Oh, I guess I didn't put one there. Okay. Let's rerun this line. Okay, we want to go here, back to, but then I'm going to change this to Auto 2D. And the reason for that is because then it, it most closely matches the shape of those two pipes there. If I keep it on horizontal to vertical, it, it has a different shape and doesn't look quite right. Let's do the same thing over here. And that hooks up our water. Each, each of these are running at full capacity. Um, we need 240 per reactor. Uh, so we have a total of 480 with all four of them. I think the only thing that remains now is the power. So let's go over here. And I'm going to remove this rail here. And what I want to do is I want to place a uh, catwalk corner right here. Place a rail there, and I guess we'll place a rail there, even though it doesn't quite match, but that's all right. Let's get a power switch. Put it right there. And I'm going to put a pole there and a pole. Uh, nope, not there. Okay, hold on. Right there. It did, fuck! It did it again. It, it bumped right at the second that I hit the mouse button, or the second before. Okay, so that looks right. Uh, oh, that's... Oh, right, I got that hooked up to my hover power. And this, of course, will be our switch that separates the nuclear grid from everything else. 
Okay. Um, now, what I want to do is... Let's temporarily... I'm not going to turn this on yet, so we still need to use our hover power for the moment. So we'll, now what we'll do is we'll just line these posts up with their uh, connectors here. Looks right. Okay, let's remove these. Uh, only because I don't want to get them mixed up with the real power poles. Now, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go across right through here. Right, just leave that there for a marker. Actually, we might be able to just go right off of that one. Let's just see what happens. So that's just one to the side of the main seam there. Oh uh, no, it's gonna it's gonna clip through that lift, isn't it? Well, I think it will. Does it go over the top of it? Let's see. We've got our insulator right there. Yeah, it just barely clips. It sucks. Okay. Um. Well, then let's just do this. We'll put you over there, and you right there. I need. I need you over here so I can stay up in the air. And that gets power to our manufacturer. Yeah, I'd rather do the little angle here where it's not quite as visible than over here. It'll look nicer in the long run. Okay, so let's see. I also have got a power connector up there that we need to get to to, to run that sink. So... That's right on the seam there. Oh, no, I, I guess it's actually over a bit. Is that clipping? Oh, damn it, Jim, it is. Okay. I got another idea then. Let's do this. Um, why don't we do away with this altogether? And we'll run this line over to here, but also pointing here. Okay, go back. 
this way. Whoops. Uh, to there. And it should come one this way. Okay. So that way we can lock that power into there. And then... Alright, you know what? Screw this. I'm turning the power on because I need to be up in the air so I can see what I'm doing. These won't start up regardless because we don't have the uranium anyway, so it's not going to actually hurt anything. Okay. Uh, let's actually power them, though, so that way they can start filling up with water. So we'll run... Um, well, we have to run off of this one. How about if we go to there, and then out to... Probably going to need to go to that one. Um... Well, that's... That's weird. That's that's got to be a bug, huh? Instead of connecting straight to the insulator, it's kind of off to the side a little bit. Hopefully, they fix that in one zero. Not that it's that big of a deal, but still, you know. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. That's funny. Um, did I? Oh yeah, this one's sticking out too far. No, the other one's in too far. Yeah, because I don't want it clipping into this little thingy here, whatever it is. Is that right? No, I think this has to go... No, that is right. It's just... Yeah, that's just one notch over from the edge of the foundation. So that's correct. I just got too many weird lines here, so it's creating an optical. So yeah, these guys should be filling up with water. Well, they're probably jammed full of water, but that's good. That is a good thing. All right, we can get rid of these jank lines now. Okay, so let's grab a pole and put it right here. And then connect to there. And that gets some of those machines going. We'll run a line from here down to you, and that gets all of that hooked up down there. We have a connection there that we need, um, and we need to line that up right about there. Okay, that takes care of that one. Are you gonna... No, you're not gonna clip. Okay. I was gonna say, you better not, damn it. Be angry. Okay, we'll bring you to here. And that gets our refinery powered up. Um, actually, that needs to go over one more. There we go. Alright, so... 
damn constructors, man. They're always a pain in the ass to get the power hooked up on. I have an idea. Why don't we take and put a pole right here. We'll get rid of this one. What the hell? And then we'll just run this one over to here. And that powers everything up. Okay, I think we are fully online except for the uranium. Uh, which will be this input here. So everything else should start queuing up with product. But again, you know, these won't actually kick in until we have the uranium itself hooked up. All right. It's looking good. Looking good. I'm, I might, yeah, I, I think I'm going to wait before I have the train start bringing more product over here until, because everything is going to get, you know, backed up and stalled out anyways and, until we get the uranium. So we'll just not worry about the train for now, because right now it's ignoring um, this. It's not dropping off anything new. That was just from before. What we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to go get this uranium here. This one shows up to us because we have a radar tower picking it up, and it's a normal. And if you guys remember from, I guess it was the last episode that you saw, it's been a few days for me, um, up on top of this, this really high uh, butte here, there's an impure node. But that one's further away and major pain in the ass to get to. Um, Tapping into this one in the future, I'll almost certainly we'll use drones because it's just that's like the ideal place to use drones because it's so hard to get to, you know. Uh, but what I will tell you is that I did go over here off camera to test stuff and I, I just kind of ran a real, uh, uh, just a jank line all the way down here to get some uranium to test everything. And then I reloaded the save, you know, to get rid of all that so I didn't have to manually take it apart again. Anyway, there are some really nasty spiders. There's a bunch of big spiders. There's one or two of the giant green spiders and a bunch of little guys all around this area. So we're going to have some serious combat to have to do to eliminate those assholes first. And I got to thinking about how I want to do this. Um, if this was a long term, you know, playthrough, which it isn't, but if it was, I would probably set up drones for here too, just because it's in a really bad, nasty spot. It's like almost, it's not really in a cave per se, but it's way down underground and the train is really rugged through there. Um, but, you know, because we're not going to continue the save, I, I think a train makes the most sense. We, we could, I could also run roads up there and, and, you know, we could use vehicles, but. I just, I don't know, there's something about that that doesn't seem like it would be as uh, as efficient as using a train, I suppose. So I got to figure that out. I got to figure out how I'm going to run the tracks and all that. But, you know, we, we will do some of that on camera, but we'll start the next episode by going up there and clearing out the, the bad bads and getting a miner set up and, you know, uh, and a train station on that end and then you know, kind of play the rest of that by ear. So that is the plan for the next episode. That is going to be it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.